Censorship in Belarus, although prohibited by the country's constitution, is enforced by a number of laws. These include a law that makes insulting the president punishable by up to five years in prison, and another that makes criticizing Belarus abroad punishable by up to two years in prison. Freedom of the press in Belarus remains extremely restricted. State-owned media are subordinated to the president and harassment and censorship of independent media are routine. The government subjects both independent and foreign media to systematic political intimidation, especially for reporting on the deteriorating economy and human rights abuses. Journalists are harassed and detained for reporting on unauthorized demonstrations or working with unregistered media outlets. Journalists have been killed in suspicious circumstances. Most local independent outlets regularly practice self censorship. Reporters Without Borders ranked Belarus 154th out of 178 countries in its 2010 Press Freedom Index. In the 2011 Freedom House Freedom of the Press report, Belarus scored 92 on a scale from 10 most free to 99 least free, because the Lukashenko regime systematically curtails press freedom. This score placed Belarus 9th from the bottom of the 196 countries included in the report and earned the country a «not free» status. Topic. Registration and state control on the media The Ministry of Information of Belarus was established in 2001 and serves as Belarus media regulator. Licensing and registration procedures are opaque and politicized. Since 2009 all media outlets, including websites, need to register or face blockage. Independent publications have been forced to use foreign-based Internet domains. Outlets that «threaten the interests of the state» can also be denied accreditation and shut down. The government established in February 2009 a public coordination council in sphere of the mass information, aimed at, coordination of interaction of state management, public associations and other organizations carrying out activities in the sphere of mass information, maintenance of correct application of the law on mass media and other legislation in sphere of mass information, consideration of the questions as issues from application to the law on mass media. Since December 2014, websites can be blocked without court order after two warnings within 12 months. Mass media status was expanded and liability for contents was widened to include user comments too. A state commission was established in August 2014 to evaluate whether media outlets contain extremist materials, passable to a ban under a 2007 counter-extremism law. <inaudible> <inaudible> State control over broadcast media The state maintains a virtual monopoly on domestic broadcast media, only the state media broadcasts nationwide, and the content of smaller television and radio stations is tightly restricted. The government has banned most independent and opposition newspapers from being distributed by the state-owned postal and kiosk systems, forcing the papers to sell directly from their newsrooms and use volunteers to deliver copies, but authorities sometimes harass and arrest the private distributors. The Russian media is allowed to transmit television programming, sell newspapers and conduct journalistic activities in Belarus, though some Russian journalists have been expelled by the Belarusian government. Thus giving some members of the public, typically those in large cities with many Russian residents, access to an alternative point of view in the Russian language nearly all Belarusians understand and most of them speak Russian. Several opposition media outlets broadcast from nearby countries to provide Belarusians alternative points of view. 
This includes the Belsat TV station and European Radio for Belarus Radio DLA In 2014 2015, dozens of freelance journalists were fined for working with foreign media, including Belarusian language media based in the EU, without official state accreditation from the Foreign Ministry, as foreseen by Article 22.9 of the Belarusian Code on Administrative Offence. Journalists were fined several hundreds of euros for having published through foreign media, rather than based on the content of their work. Computer equipments were also seized. The journalists' find had published on Polish-based Belsat TV, Deutsche Welle. Procedural guarantees, including the hearing of witnesses in court, were reportedly not followed by Belarusian authorities, but appeals were rejected. The prosecution of freelancers was condemned by the Belarusian Association of Journalists by, which deemed it a gross violation of the standards of freedom of expression, as well as by the OSCE representative on freedom of the media and by the European Federation of Journalists EFJ. Since April 2014, 38 freelance journalists have been fined €200 minus 500, totaling over €8,000, some of them being repeatedly prosecuted and fined. In 2012, Belarusian largest state network MTIS stopped broadcasting of Euronews for unknown reasons. Euronews was the last independent TV channel available in Belarus. Topic. Charges, attacks and threats against journalists In 2014 the media environment in Belarus remained extremely restrictive. More than 20 journalists were questioned, warned or fined in 2014 for "...illegal production and distribution of media products." Many were targeted for contributing without accreditation to foreign-based media in Poland and Lithuania. Some foreign journalists were refused accreditation at the Ice Hockey World Championships. Some were turned back at the border, others were required to obtain a separate accreditation to cover non-sport-related issues. Arbitrary detention, arrests and harassment of journalists are the norm in Belarus. Anti-extremism legislation targets independent journalism, including materials deemed contrary to the honor of the President of Belarus. Independent reporting is deterred by the threat of closure of media outlets. Censorship in Belarus, although prohibited by the country's constitution, is enforced by a number of laws. These include a law that makes insulting the president punishable by up to five years in prison, and another that makes criticizing Belarus abroad punishable by up to two years in prison. The Belarusian journalist Andrei Pokzobot has been repeatedly charged of defamation against the president since 2011. In September 2013 the state prosecutor dropped all charges for lack of evidence and released him from a three-year suspended sentence. In May 2014 the wife of Babrusk-based blogger Ala Jalnu was prosecuted for alleged violence against a police officer. Their son was then sentenced to three years in a penal colony and a $5,000 fine for violence against a traffic police officer. Jalnu himself has faced over a dozen trials, was repeatedly summoned by the police, and had his professional equipment cameras confiscated several times. In November 2014 the journalist Alexander Alesson of the independent newspaper Belarus Irinic was detained by the State Security Committee KGB and then charged with espionage and treason, after he had written about military issues concerning the Ukraine conflict. Journalists killed Alexander Chulanov, sports correspondent for the National State Television, was found dead having been hit with a blunt object in his apartment in Minsk on March 1, 1994. Dmitry Zavadsky, a cameraman for ORT, disappeared on July 7, 2000. The last time he was seen was at the Minsk National Airport. On March 14, 2002 Valery Ignatovich and Maxim Malik, former members of a special police unit, were convicted and sentenced to life in prison for his abduction. 
His family claimed that real responsibility lay with the government the same claim was made by two former employees of the Prosecutor General's office and was validated by the United States Department of State and that they were just scapegoats. He was declared dead on November 28, 2003. Mykhailo Kolomayets, founder of the Ukrainian news agency was found hanged near Maladzichna on October 30, 2002. Veronika Cherkasova, a reporter for Solidarnost, was stabbed to death in her apartment in Minsk on October 20, 2004. Vasily Grodnikov, a journalist working for Narodnaha Volya, was found dead with a head wound in his apartment in Minsk on October 17, 2005. Ala Byabinan, founder of Charter 97, was found hanged on September 3, 2010, in an area outside Minsk. While authorities claimed it was a suicide, the Committee to Protect Journalists CPJ considered it reasonably certain that he was murdered in direct reprisal for his journalistic work. <laughs> Self-censorship The Ministry of Information gave warning to 34 media outlets in 2015 alone. Since an outlet receiving two note in a year can be closed this is seen as a way to encourage self-censorship by the Belarusian Association of Journalists by. .Another thing that pushes journalists to self-censorship is the enormous amount of the defamation fines and payments to officials that can be inflicted by courts. In 2010 the president issued the Decree No. 60 which provides for registration of all Internet resources, creation of blacklists of the web sites access to which should be blocked, and a number of other restrictive measure. Even if not all of them are used, after that, some popular Internet media became more cautious and softened their criticism of the government. <laughs> Internet censorship. In 2006, 2007, and 2008 Reporters Without Borders RWB listed Belarus as an «Internet enemy». In 2009 Belarus moved to RWB's countries «under surveillance» list where it remained in 2010 and 2011. In 2012, Belarus was moved back to the RWB list of Internet enemies. The OpenIT initiative classified Internet filtering in Belarus as selective in the political, social, conflict, security, and Internet tools areas. In November 2010, the Belarus government has moved to second and third generation controls to manage its national information space. Control over the Internet is centralized with the government-owned Bell Telecom managing the country's Internet gateway. Regulation is heavy with strong state involvement in the telecommunications and media market. Most users who post online media practice a degree of self-censorship prompted by fears of regulatory prosecution. The president has established a strong and elaborate information security policy and has declared his intention to exercise strict control over the Internet under the pretext of national security. The political climate is repressive and opposition leaders and independent journalists are frequently detained and prosecuted. A new media law that took effect in February 2009 requires domestic and international websites to register with the Information Ministry or be blocked. In August 2010, the Prosecutor General's Office announced its intention to toughen criminal penalties for the dissemination of slanderous information through the Internet. Since 2007, Internet cafe owners have been required to keep records of their customers' identities and the websites they visit, facilitating inspection by the security services. On January 6, 2012, a law took effect requiring that all commercial websites selling goods or services to Belarusian citizens to be operated from within the country and under a by domain name. Moreover, those who provide Internet access including ISPs and Wi-Fi hotspot operators must register all users, and they must also censor websites on a blacklist covering pornography and other extremist 
websites, bloggers and online journalism used to be almost free, although limited to a very narrow audience, the government has started censoring the web too, since internet penetration has started growing. In March 2014 Bell Telecom blocked the Nasha Neva newspaper website, possibly as a test for the upcoming 2015 presidential elections. Cyber attacks DDoS cyber attacks have been reported, on the upcoming to the 2015 presidential election, to the websites of the websites of Bellapin News Agency and Navani.by and web portal Tut.by, after they published a critical article about students ordered to attend official events. The Belarusian Association of Journalists has expressed concern. In July 2014 the Eurobelarus website reported a cyber attack, possibly related to its coverage of the Ukraine conflict. On 19 December 2014 several Belarusian websites were blocked, including Belopin.by, Navani.by, Belaruspartisan.org, Charter97.org, Gazetaby.com, Zavtra.by, UDF.by. The block extended within 2015. <laughs> Music censorship In the past few years, many Belarusian musicians and rock bands have been unofficially banned from radio and television, have had their concert licenses revoked, and have had their interviews censored in the media. Researchers Maya Medic and Limez Lovers reported in 2006 that, "...independent music making in Belarus today is an increasingly difficult and risky enterprise," and that the Belarusian government puts pressure on unofficial musicians, including banning from official media and imposing severe restrictions on live performance." Belarus government policies tend to divide Belarusian musicians into pro-government official and pro-democracy unofficial camps. Economic barriers have been placed against various artists, leading to self-censorship. See also Human rights in Belarus Telecommunications in Belarus